Alright guys, Tad Crub here today, storylines for the Pro League Qualifier, that is going to be today's story that we're going to be talking about. First of all, I want to say thanks for 7,000 subscribers, 5,000 subscribers we hit during CDBL Vegas, so a month and a bit down the line, already at 7k, fantastic stuff and thanks a lot for that. And I do want to say, usually I say this around milestones, that YouTube says that about 57% of my views in the last month have come from people who aren't yet subscribed. So if that's one of you and YouTube keeps recommending you my videos but you're not actually subscribed, maybe you didn't even realise it, then you know, feel free. It's free after all and then you make sure you don't miss an upload from any time now into the future. The second thing I wanted to say is there's a tournament going on tonight, sponsored, not really sponsored, but it's hosted by the COD Competitive subreddit. So it's on the Twitch channel called uh, twitch.tv forward slash rcodcomp. I'll link this down in the description box below so you can follow it so you don't miss any of the action tonight. It's probably starting a couple of hours from when this video is going to go live. I'll be casting it alongside this guy called I Hold Shift, which you may have heard of. He makes videos kind of similar to my ones. And there may still be some slots open to play, so I'll leave my Discord link in the comment section. If you join that, maybe if we need some people to fill in for some teams that aren't actually playing, because there's like 32 teams, so, you know, 160 odd players, and we may need some fill-ins for people who can't make it so if you're interested join my discord and then I can ask people if you know, we need extra players or anything like that if not you can just watch it'll probably be going on really late so it starts at 6 p.m gmt that's 1 p.m eastern time so relatively soon from when you're watching this video probably but it really kicks off when like the semis and finals start happening probably much later in the evening so anyway I hope you tune into that should be a good time and let's crack right on with the video. So, storylines for the Pro League Qualifier. Definitely some really interesting ones I'd like to bring up. Tan is going through his top five players to watch in every division. I thought I'd just do top five overall storylines. So we'll start with the ones of like the lowest caliber, and then we'll go through to the real big ones. So, firstly, I wanted to mention this pool with Red Reserve and Uyu, because I did talk about this in yesterday's predictions, but the first storyline is just between these two teams. Because if we saw at CWL Vegas, the pool was very similar indeed if this ever wants to load we scroll down a fair bit we find that the pool for okay here it is eg uyu and red reserve were all in the same pool again as they are right here a couple of roster changes have come in eg have swapped out saints for facento and uyu have swapped out nova for gorgo knight i think but red reserve have the same team and they got pretty battered by these teams they got beaten 3-2 by uyu and they also got beaten 3-2 by eg so not the ideal result from them and if they lose both those matches again given the caliber that we expect out of the teams four through seven you know, the team that loses both of those matches may well really struggle to make the Pro League through a potential gauntlet 12-team bracket. I've explained the format in the past, but just to quickly mention it, the top two in every pool go through to the Pro League automatically, the bottom two go home, and then the middle three on the final day, there's a 12-team bracket, the top four teams from that bracket make the Pro League. So definitely a very fair system, but this matchup is going to be an interesting one. And, I've talked, and as I've talked about in the past, Infinite Warfare champs, a couple of these guys on this UU team that were on Allegiance at the time, beat Red Reserve with Rated Joe, Urban and Shawnee I think was the squad to knock them out top 24 so definitely has been some rivalries between these teams in the past and it's going to be an interesting storyline because I don't really see many other teams competing for the Pro League spots and I'm, as I said yesterday I'm expecting Red Reserve to get the better of them but who knows if it's a one-off best of five. The second storyline we're going to go to Pool B and that's going to be Methods versus Methods in this G2 team so I'm going to go back to my uh, Excel spreadsheet that I had yesterday so you can see all the players here. G2, Methods came into the team with Lacefield, of course. Lacefield coming from the Pittsburgh Knights, Methods coming from FaZe. Then we have Methods with a capital Z also on Heretic. So if you guys aren't aware of this, there's two players called Methods, one of which is the American Assault Rifle player, and Methods, uh, the, okay, the other Methods, I think he's also an Assault Rifle player, kind of plays similar roles, but you know, Methods really known as the sloth they are. I think all the Spanish guys, they're even a little bit cracked out, even if they, uh, even if they are AR players. I think Sucre's maybe the main AR Methods is secondary AR, and the American Methods did a tweet saying, you know, two the other methods saying like you know whoever wins you know the loser has to change their name right so I thought that was kind of funny so leading on from this not a completely different storyline but whether a Spanish team makes the pro league is interesting the the next storyline uh, encounters the same thing for the APAC region but whether a Spanish team makes the league is kind of interesting here because I have picked Heretics to be my 16th team that makes the league you could pick like a mind freak or something but we'll go through that in the next storyline 
But there's three teams here. There's Heretics KFC, and then we scroll down a bit. We have Movistar Riders here, and then we have the Giants also in this pool. Okay, yeah, so you've got the Spanish Derby, as I said. Heretics versus Giants, probably the two big ones. Not many people are expecting much out of Giants, I don't think. And then we have Movistar Riders here as well. So there's three Spanish teams. Heretics look the most likely to qualify, but leading on from that Methods vs. Methods storyline, I thought it might be interesting to discuss whether a Spanish team can make the Pro League for the first time ever. Given it's a 5v5 scenario, it seems somewhat likely that these different regions will have a chance to qualify. Even a team like Overtime, maybe, these French lot, they might have a chance. Vitality was in the league last season and they had some French guys, so it'd be really nice to see you know, a more global spread of the action and you know, maybe Spain can get in there for one time. The third storyline leading on very nicely from that is whether an APAC team will make it because I think a lot of people are having questions about this. People were commenting on yesterday's video saying they're pretty confident they will. Okay you've got three Spanish teams here, you've only got two Australian or Australian New Zealand teams here from the APAC region Asia Pacific is what it stands for. You've got Mind Freak in this pool D which is achievable. I think this pool D is definitely, I think the three teams below them, I really don't have much faith in. If these guys can show up and beat a team like, I mean, I think they should be pretty comfortably getting into that 12 team bracket. Whether they get out of that is going to be difficult. I think it's going to be very hard for this squad to get past EG and Red Reserve. Getting into the 12 team bracket should be okay. But as I say, it's probably going to be a gauntlet in there. A single upset could send a really strong team in and very difficult. The way that format works is like double elimination. Something something like that's going on. And this team, uh, people have been saying that it's not exactly how they would like it. Beast and not being the ideal player they wanted to come into the lineup. They would have tried to get one of the Tainted Minds guys, but their buyouts are apparently too high. And you know, as I say, with Shock still on the team, there's a chance if Luca can turn up, Buzzo being a coach, there's a decent chance here. They've showed some potential, but I'm not really seeing it. And then we've got Tainted Minds here in Pool B, and this is a super tough pool. With all the four teams above them, I am tipping to qualify. I think Tainted Minds are going to struggle, but I do think they'll get out into the 12-team bracket. So I'm expecting two Australian New Zealand teams to get into the 12-team bracket. And then if one of them can top, come top four, that'd be fantastic for the APAC region. I'd really like a team from there to qualify. I'm not sure this year it's going to happen. I regret to say it, but... I'm not sure how likely it seems right now. Typically, it's only been my freak that's in the league. The second half of World War II, stage two, we had two Australian New Zealand teams in the league in Mind Freak and Tainted Minds. Whether even one of them can make it this time is, is up in the air for now. So I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts are on that in the comment section below. The fourth storyline to touch on is FaZe Clan versus FaZe Clan Black, or really just FaZe Clan in general as a team. So FaZe versus FaZe Black is the very first matchup I did talk about in the video I did on the pool play breakdowns initially that there's a potential conflict of interest here, but they are playing the very first match that shouldn't really be on the cards. And yeah, the idea that both teams, which team is going to be better is a very interesting one. People have been really gassing up this Asim guy, I think that's how you pronounce it. And, you know, these guys did relatively well last year as well. They had a couple of breakout events. They've definitely been names on the radar. FaZe, obviously, they won a championship last year. They did have methods on their team come top 16 at Vegas. Now you bring in Selium, and I think this really is an interesting story because this is Selium's first ever LAN, as far as I'm aware. He's been playing online for years. Like, people have heard this name going around, just dominating online tournaments and all of those sort of things. But this is his first ever LAN, and it's probably arguably the most important one of the entire year. This land determines like everything. I think people maybe are underestimating or understating just how important this is. It's not like stage one and stage two. There's no relegation. It's one season. If your organization doesn't get into the league, your organization is not in the league for the entire season. And the players on that organization are going to have a very tough time staying on the org, even getting a salary to play the game full time. And, you know, the team, whatever team doesn't make the league, if it's a relatively top team, they're instantly going to break up. And all those players are going to be, you know, they're going to be single handedly trying to do as best they possibly can themselves to get picked up by a pro league team. And they're going to leave their organization in the dust. So Selium has huge pressure on his shoulders, I think. His first ever LAN to turn up and do this thing for FaZe Clan because you can't have a league without FaZe Clan. It's one of the biggest names in Call of Duty. It seems like to me there's no chance they don't qualify just off theory crafting alone. But 
But it's a very interesting one. Also, you may have to bring up Zuma as well because he had a really poor Vegas. Have a look at the stats here. I'll link these down in the description box below. And yeah, somewhere here, okay, I think it was page five, we find Zuma at a 0.82 overall KD. So hardly impressive from him for his standards. And whether Zuma can pick it up and whether Selium can play solid is really what we're looking for here. If they can do that, I think FaZe can make the Pro League relatively comfortably. But it's still an interesting story. This is first ever land. Methods is a tried and proven player. That's a risk that may not pay off for these guys. The final storyline really does encompass the top teams that may not make the league. So the likes of Team Envy and 100 Thieves are really the ones I want to focus on. Some people are maybe thinking that FaZe might also not have that much opportunity. Reciprocity as well, I think they might struggle a little bit, is what I said in my predictions yesterday. But okay, people have been talking about how in scrims and stuff, Envy and 100 Thieves have looked a lot better lately, which is definitely a fair point, And maybe they're better than, than the credit I give them here. I do think, though, going into Vegas, 100 Thieves had come second in like the last two pro downs. Envy, when the game first dropped, they looked really good in scrims. They maybe dropped off a little bit before Vegas, but still were looking relatively solid. People weren't necessarily expecting them to come top 12 like they did. And, you know, of course, 100 Thieves come top 12 as well, if I can just bring that up right here. So top 12 placings, we have 100T and Team Envy. So maybe there's no reason for me to say that Red Reserve and Red Reciprocity are particularly more likely to qualify than 100T and Envy. I think Red has a relatively easy pull, but... 100T and Envy are the big ones. I think this is really the final storyline to talk about. Maybe 100 Thieves is a slightly bigger one. So it does seem like Kenny has finally decided to pull out a sword, because that may be to their benefit. But as I say, 100T were looking pretty good online, actually really good in advance of CWL Vegas. That didn't work out so well for them. So I don't necessarily know if the transition from online to LAN this time will be so easy. You know, maybe they'll just turn up and dominate kids. It's definitely within their grasp. They have an unbelievable amount of talent on the team, but they don't have a coach. The role is issues maybe seem to still be an issue okay Kenny's put out a Sorg finally they definitely have the talent to make the Pro League and I'd be very surprised if they didn't similar situation with Envy they haven't made a roster change but they do have this coach in Belvis who is probably looking at what a lot of the other teams are doing preparing very in depth and I would be surprised if these guys don't make the Pro League as well, considering how good Hook is. And I think Apathy now is back on this second SMG, which I really don't know why he was off it in the first place. I think Silly was using the sub. But now we have Hook and App on the SMGs, Silly and Aches on the Maddox, Assault on like the ICR kind of main Assault Rifle role. Seems to make a lot more sense. So these team changes for Team Envious and 100 Thieves, whether they will make the difference for them to make the Pro League, is really the storyline here. Based on their performances at Vegas, they should make it based on where they place. Top 12 should easily be good enough, especially with the caliber of teams that were there as well. The top four, of course, not at this event because they're already in the Pro League. So it's a very interesting one. Those are my top five storylines. Leave your thoughts on them in the comment section below. Join my Discord below. Tune into the Arcom Cod Tourney, the Winter Classic tonight. There are some MLG sponsored prizes. I'll be casting it. Should be a fantastic time. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new as always. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you next time. I'm just, I'm in their spawn. Coming towards you, weak. Let's go in their spawn. Last guy. That wasn't him, that wasn't him. Oh my god, I beamed him.